Hey there and happy Monday! I'm excited to come to you uh, today with Linda Sampson's virtual party card number two and have lots of products that I'm using, lots of new things and even a fun technique to show you. So let me show you today's card. There we go. Get rid of the sunshine glare. We don't want to get rid of the sunshine, believe me. It's a great day finally for planting again here too. Hi there, Ginger. Uh, this card's for your sister's party here. Okay, so I'm using those new note cards. Um, so they're nicely um, pre-cut, pre-scored, and they have these gorgeous envelopes to go with. And I'll show you more of the colors here, but I always like to show you a sneak peek of what I'm gonna be making. Hi there, Julie. Hi, Arlene. So yeah, I've been out buzzing around and all of a sudden it got quiet and I'm like, I can finally put together this card that I've um, had burning in my brain. So I saw a sample that uh, Stampin' Up! gave us um, through an online event and I love the technique and I'm like, I have to show everybody that technique because I haven't used it in a while. Um, I mean, I probably used it 20 years ago and maybe a couple times since, but when I saw that, I'm like, this is a great technique to show everyone. Uh, and then it just goes so well with this uh, suite um, of products to the tea collection. Um, and great, my hostess Linda's online too. Hi there, Angie, so this is good. Um, so yeah, this was great because I had to order the supplies to get it in and then um, and make sure I had time to like uh, perfect the technique too. So let me get my camera turned around, my iPad put down. So if you guys have questions while you're looking at it um, or while I'm doing it, then we can cover those as well. So there's my hostess, Linda, like I said, card number two. So here it is in person um, as well. So using the Tea Boutique note cards and envelopes, like I said, it's just so fun when the envelopes match like that. So it's um, a nice little um, kind of time saver too. Not only are they cute, but they save time as well. Hi there, Marie. Good to have you on here. So the Tea Boutique collection is in that new annual catalog here on page um, 12 and 13 you can see all sorts of great ideas and I love how they've really shown um, the note cards and envelopes well too as well as um, so many other different samples with different layouts as well and then as I was getting to this page I thought oh you know what just a few pages later on page 20 this has been in the catalog forever the nothing's better than with the cookies and the um uh, the coffee and different sentiments and I'm like you know what these two things between the sentiments and the images could go um, well together so pairing those things together could be really fun um, that way so keep in mind like if you want a cookie to go with your tea or something like that and like I said even the sentiments would be great um, but what I'm using today I'm not saying I won't pull those in at a later date is all from the tea boutique so let me get started with that too um, so I'll be be using um, this stamp set and um, the image in here and um, also the sentiment here and then another little one for the inside um, so that's what I'm using for stamps they're all gonna be from that stamp set and then the six by six paper is super cute and what I came to um, find out is besides like the in colors one two, <laughs> three, four, five, all being used. Then we've got all these that coordinate with them. I've already found a favorite. I don't know why I love this. Like I would love a dress. Actually, I wonder if I have a dress kind of this pattern, <laughs> but I love that. I love lots of them, but when I flip it over, then I will see like today's card matches kind of that so I can kind of um, replicate certain cards because those patterns I'm noticing like one, two, three, four, and five are on here. So if I run out of um, the note cards and envelopes, I can kind of use this fun paper on the back side. Um, and I love like the lemons. Um, I have a uh, stamping friend, Tori, that loves lemons. And I'm like, as soon as I got to that paper, I'm like, oh, she's going to love that. Um, so that's just um, some of the fun designs. And like I said, on the back side, you'll see more of the plain ones too. Hey there, Lisa. Hi, Renee. 
Um, and then it's always helpful, of course, to, when they list what colors are being used. So that's that. And then, um, like I said, I showed you these. And now, based on how many people order from Linda's party to get her cards, like um, this is what I'm using today is um, this one that is, hold on here, um, this note card with that envelope. But if um, if I run out of that design, what I might do is just flip flop and use this one with this one. Same color scheme, but just um, using this DSP instead of the that D DSP and so on. You'll get it. Um, but I always try to stay pretty true to form, but... Um, like I said, um, it's sometimes just easier to switch um, and flip-flop color combinations than wait a week to order again and get that out in the mail. And some of you have said, oh, I like the variation I got better than the one that you had intended um, to make and send out. So that's always fun to hear little notes like that too. So what I'm using then is this, like I've went over, I'm not going to go over that again. And then I'm taking this um, pattern from the 6x6 Designer Series Paper Tea Boutique. Um, and I'm just using this for that little bit of a layer here. And then just pulling in that new color Tahitian Tide. Um, this is the Sweet Sorbet. And then I'll be pulling in the blends for coloring there um, before I do that fun technique that I promised you about. And and at the end, um, when I use the sentiment to add to my card, I'm going to ask you guys to chime in if you like it better um, in sweet sorbet or white when we get that far. So let me start with, by showing you my newest product that I got in. It is the magnetic pad. And I want to talk to you about that right away. It is heavy. It's thin, but there's some weight to that. Um, so that was kind of surprising. But it makes me feel really good about how sturdy this is. You can see I've been cutting into it kind of. Um, but that's great news. The not so great news is when you get this and you order it, it comes wrapped with the instructions. You'll want to take a black Sharpie and just um, Sharpie out the number two there. That does not go in there. And if you're wondering, like, what is number two? This is number two, just kind of that thin shim that you usually put on top of plate number one, then this, and then your cutting pad. So this doesn't go in there um, when you use the magnetic pad. So you'll um, have your big thick plate number one, and then you'll have your magnetic plate, and then um, whatever you're cutting, and then the cutting plate number three. That's how you will layer it. So like I said, if you are a person who likes to keep um, instructions with what you're using, just take a Sharpie and put that out and then the rest of it is is correct. So just want to help you out with that too. I posted on my Facebook page, I think last week too, to help you guys out. So um, it's just fun to finally have a really nice magnetic plate again, um, especially because I'm going to be stamping and want kind of precision as I do my teacup here. So I will start with my stamping on that teacup and I will stamp that on my um, stampin' mat here because it is a photopolymer stamp. And so then I always like to have my stampin' mat because that's what's gonna give me my best image. So we've got that fun um, flower, um, flower teacup. And hi, Patricia, thanks for joining in. And it's just pretty open. So I'm going to ink that up with my tuxedo black memento pad, which is always great to use when um, using the Stampin' Blends to color it in. So that's really cute there. And I think for time-wise, I always like to make it... Um, like as uh, efficient as possible. So I wanna do all my die cutting at the same time. So for the dies that I'm using that go with the bundle, the other part of the bundle, the teacup dies. So I'm going to use the um, wide open teacup there and then these little hearts I'll use too. I love it that you'll get three different hearts cut out, um, just one pass, one die, and I love it when they put three in there so you're not looking for three tiny little dies. Gives a little bit more size, but look at all these other great dies. There's a lot of dies in the stamp set too, so I'm really excited about using like the lemon, the flowers, um, the leaves, everything in there, and um, all these little tiny tea bags bags too and I like that they gave us more than one of those too. Um, the other dies that I'm using for today's card come from the 
scalloped contours dies. So you know I've used these quite often. I'm not using the biggest one, but then the next two sizes that fit in there, that's the ones that I'm using today. I'm using two of those. Um, so let me get going. And this is so exciting, guys. Like, I can lay this on here, and some of you might go, okay, how does it compare with, like, possibly my older style uh, magnetic plate, which was thick like the plate number one there. This doesn't, ha this has magnets, like the whole plate is magnetized, not just dots. So when I lay this down, it doesn't want to jump. And if you guys know, you'll be like, oh yes, I know exactly what she means. Um, we all love that magnetic plate, but if you put a die in the wrong area or something, it could jump or scoot on its own will. So this just stays right in place like so. And we just crank that through, and it goes through so easy. So we have that, and look at how it just stayed in place. So we've got that cut out perfectly, and then um, just that little scrap there. And because I love it, and that this isn't even necessary to use for the next couple dies, I'm still just going to leave it in there because I love it. And whoops, this is going to go here. And I want some little Tahitian Tide colored hearts there. So I'm just going to slide that on there as well. But yeah, if you have questions about the new magnetic cutting pad or layering or anything, please let me know. Um, because we have been waiting for this for a long time. Oops, there. So we've got those little hearts. Like I said, they cut out individually, even though it's just one die. So we've got that. And I'll set that aside and that and then we just have one more thing to die cut and then we can continue on with the card i love the six by six paper for die cutting because that whole six by six sheet just fits right um, on the cutting platforms that you want to use so that's always nice so for sure you can make a couple passes in there and I'll save that and I bet I'll end up using that for a different card for you down the road too. So now all my die cutting is done so we can get going with the coloring. And hi there Missy. I always like to kind of bring my camera in a little bit closer when I'm doing my coloring um, just in case you're new to the Stampin' Blend. So the color I'm using today to start out with is the light sweet sorbet and I'm just going to this is so easy to color in um, I wouldn't have looked at this and thought oh yeah I want to color that in until like I said I saw the video of this one gal um, for our Stampin' Up! event color this in and I'm like you know that really came together pretty quick and easy and if you know me if it has to be colored in and takes a lot of time. Then I kind of just bypass um, projects like that. And I know there are some of you that love to color. That would be like, shame on you, Belle. And others, I'd be like, I hear you, sister. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so, um, so just putting this lightest color on. I don't have to do it perfect when I get it towards the inside stem there because um, I'm going to go back and just kind of dot with the darker um, there. Hi Darla, thanks for popping in. So now I'm going to open up the cap for the darker um, sweet sorbet color and like I said just kind of dot and pull that color up into each little leaf like that. And sometimes I don't notice so much with the red colors until it dries. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you can see that color variation where it kind of blended. And it just adds some nice depth to that. So just adding that really quick is kind of fun like so. Now I'm going to take the Tahitian Tide. I'm going to start with the darker color. And I'm just going to kind of color in um, the handle here with the darker like so and then just kind of trace um, this kind of come out a little bit away from that edge and then just trace around the edges here like so and um, for some of you that like to heat emboss I am going to end up heat embossing this um, it could be fun to not do it the way I'm going to do it, but to um, actually heat emboss um, 
some um, black embossing powder and that would make all these flowers kind of pop and stand up on their own um, and that might make things easier to color in too. So that's just the dark and I'm going to come back with the light Tahitian Tide and just kind of fill in all of these areas too. And like I said, it goes pretty fast. And maybe everybody's um, idea of fast isn't always the same, but I thought it went faster than I thought it would, put it that way. And I feel like with the blends, they are so smooth too that you can kind of cruise over images pretty quick um, that way too. Hopefully the squeaky squeak noise isn't getting you. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do when I'm done with this is I'm going to heat emboss it with some clear embossing powder. And that is going to make this whole cup look almost kind of realistic like a, like a china teacup would with kind of that nice glaze finish. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I thought that this color combination was really fun, too. And I couldn't find exactly what um, they used. I know they did red here, and I was like, okay, I think it's the new Sweet Sorbet because that's what the co uh, the collection, the sweet, has listed and such. So I thought, you know what, I'll go with that. But I can't remember if it was Tahitian Tide or not. But I like, I liked it, too, so I thought, well, let's go with that. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it in low camera mode here. Now I'm going to open up my Versamark um, pad and I'm going to take this teacup and press the whole teacup into the ink pad. Like I said, I, I did this years ago. Um, we have those cool rain boots right now when and the watering cans and things like that. And I think that would be such a fun technique to use um, to do that as well because then your rain boots would look like truly rubberized and would just make it kind of have that fun glazed look and come to life that way. So you can see I like to put lots of powder on here and then that's gonna all stick so you can see it kind of looks a little bit cloudy now if I bring it up there you can kind of see the embossing powder um, crystallized on there like so but now it's gonna be the fun part let me get my heat gun over here and this is where it's important to um, have a tweezer or something because with this being cut out I usually like to cut my things out before I color it in case something does move as I'm cutting it out and I don't want to have gone through all of that work of coloring it and then have to start all over so now you can kind of see as it heat sets it's not gonna look crystally powdery it's gonna be kind of shiny look at that isn't that fun guys so like I said, it's been like ages since I've done this. Now I'm just gonna remove my um, tweezer and you can see where it kind of has that little bit of powder. And then if I just go back with my heat gun, that'll fill in that area too. I'll turn that off and it doesn't take long at all for that to dry or not be too hot to handle but isn't that a fun look for that and like I said now I'm sure a lot of you are like oh yeah that would be really cool with the rain boots in the watering can and things like that so um, you can think of other things that it might look good for um, different projects and such and now we can just take all these little things that I've die cut and start assembling um, so I'm going to take Tahitian Tide. Oops, let me get my camera back up. Um, could ever, could ever double emboss. Yeah, you could actually um, do that too. And I've done that um, and made some like metallic looking tags. I've, um, yeah, um, to make it look kind of like faux um, leather or gold or things like that too. So that would work really well. Um, and yeah, Julie, I could see you totally loving this technique. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put some regular adhesive on my Tahitian Tide Contours die here and just kind of center that there. And then um, this next layer has that little bit of a pattern to it from the um, T Boutique 6x6. So I'm going to take the back side 
and just pop that up with some dimensionals here like so and get those little pieces in my trash off to the side okay and then um you can see the little stitching on there besides a scallop which is really nice and then I'll just center that so this next part is where I'm going to need your help um let me get out my little strip that's hiding underneath my cutting pad. So one of the sentiments in the tea, um, teacup stamp set is thank you for your friendship, which I love. Just going to stamp that out. This strip is, boy, just a tiny little hashtag less than a half an inch. So um, it's funny how this is such a small little narrow um, sentiment. So I wanted to make sure um, that you could um, that you could do um, something that small on there. Oh, Arlene says that she takes packaging tape over the boots before she uses a die cut, and that would make it look like that too. Well, that's a that's interesting too. I never thought about that. Okay, so I'm gonna take and cut that like so. And then I'm wondering, this is what I'm wondering. So that's how I have it on the sample is thank you for your friendship there. What do you guys think about if I stamped it in black and then had it um, stamped on sweet sorbet? Do you like that? It doesn't, you know, like, how do I want to say it doesn't pop as much, but I kind of like how it coordinates. So that I didn't know if it seemed like too white or if that just blended in too much. So um, I'm going to do, since this card's already made up, I'm going to put this one on. Well, that gives you guys some time to tell me what you prefer, the sweet sorbet or the white for the greeting. Um, so on this, I'm just gonna put one dimensional off to the side here. That barely fits on because like I said, it's barely less than half an inch, whoops, but I do want to get some adhesive on the other part of it. So we've got obviously adhesive <laughs> there and then that dimensional there. So that's going to kind of go off to the side here like so. And then I'm going to take this and Linda says she likes black on the sweet sorbet, and she's the hostess, so she's always going to be right, right? <laughs> okay, whoops, and I just want to make sure again and show you how fun that looks nice and shiny like that, um, and that's going to get some dimensionals as well. So let me go one and two and three dimensionals on there, whoops, like so. And then we've got that. I'm going to kind of center that, which sometimes it's like, do you center the cup minus the handle, the whole thing? So I'm just kind of putting it on like that. But I feel like that really makes those red flowers pop and add depth when you put it on here. And especially with that kind of glaze on there, that's kind of fun too. Oh, blue might look good too. That is a really good idea, Missy. See, that's why I like asking for your guys' input because um, that would be kind of fun too. You know, let's just, um, I feel like I'm cruising along on this card. I'm going to clean off that stamp and I'm going to use the Tahitian Tide ink. So I've got that ready to go here. So I know I'm not gonna waste a lot of your time. So I'm going to open up Tahitian Tide. Just going to use that over here. And then you guys can see a third version too. Okay, thank you for your friendship. Oh, I wonder if I really squished it in there. So this is just an idea. So if I do it, I won't squish it as much next time. So this is what the blue on white would kind of look like too. Ooh, I like that as well. So now you've got three options. You've got the black on there, and then you've got the blue on there or the black on red. Hmm. So all sorts of things. That's really cool. I'm glad that I could kind of do that on the fly for you guys. And then the last thing I want to add to the front, my kind of like accessory, is going to be those little hearts that I cut out right away. And they're pretty tiny, so I just kind of press them into a glue dot here, like so. And I'm just going to set one like that. Oops. There is kind of a right or wrong. You can see a little bit of a beveled edge. 
So I'm just going to take that like so and kind of build like a little bit of a pyramid with these three. I was going to have them kind of floating out and because this was offset and everything, I wasn't sure if I should have the hearts floating one way or the other. And then when I kind of just put them like that, I'm like, you know, that fills up that spot kind of perfect to have the hearts kind of like floating out of the cup like that. Oh, see, Arlene likes the blue. Julie likes the blue. And um, so Missy, your suggestion was really good really good <laughs> so um that's it for the front I didn't want to add any more accessories because I kind of wanted that glazy cup to steal the show with that technique but I am going to add to the inside hey there Carol thanks for popping in um, and so we have this kind of little tea bag here with a little tiny flower that looks like kind of a smaller version or like a chunk of what's on the front here in the red so that's kind of fun. And hi there, Vicki. Good to see you on here. And I'm just going to stamp this out kind of like one, two, three times just for a little bit of something to carry over to the inside. So that way, um, thank you for your friendship. I didn't want to put anything too much um, that would make it not as um, versatile as other times and such. So we've got that. Hey there, Brenda. I'm sure you're having a busy day today. Um, thanks for popping in. And let me just show you guys then um, this fun envelope that goes with the tea boutique. So we've got that and then um, when you put it in there, it's got a fun a little envelope. Some of the flowers carry through there as well as there, which I think is really fun. So plenty of space for your address um, and everything else on there. And I thought that was just so sweet. And like I said, some of you might get, you know, your card like that. And if you're just joining in, um, depending on how many people order through Linda's party and such, I might make a reverse card with this being the base and then um, using this and popping it up and such on there too. And I did kind of experiment with that um, teacup on there and I thought it looked fine either way too. So just kind of give you some options that way. But otherwise, that is card number two for Linda Sampson's virtual party. Let me get this turned around. So um, Friday I did card number one and tomorrow I'll do card number um, card number three for Linda's party and then that will um, end her virtual demos but her party will still be open for about a week or so she wants to try and keep it open um, as long as towards the end of the month as she can same with Brenda who just popped on so I have two open host codes so if you're needing help um, ordering let me know which host code you'd like it to go towards and then I can update that hostess when your order comes in to surprise them and say hey guess what you got another order through your party um, so whatever code you use and you'll get the three cards from Brenda's card our party or Linda's three um, two of them you know tomorrow I'll do number three and then as a thank you then you would get like Linda's three cards um, as a thank you from her and I for ordering so um, oh and then uh, you Missy says she likes using Stitch with Whimsy um, on the inside of the card too. Oh, that's a great idea to use that for the inside. I've never used it for the inside of my cards. I'll have to start thinking about that or um, come up with a good idea for that for you guys so you can go, what's that? And then I can show you. <laughs> that's great. So thanks so 